say uh, somebody that makes whiskey or a distiller, I think the, the first thing you jump to is, you know, long bearded man with a mason jar out in the, the woods of Kentucky, but it's not. This is chemical engineering and mechanical engineering. You're trying to balance the congeners that come off, your high wines, your low wines. You're trying to make sure that everything comes out perfect. And it's very complicated. If we're doing everything perfect, there's still weather to deal with. There's still sugar and enzyme contents of the grain. There's just numerous different variables that you constantly have to stay on top of. And no matter how good you are, you're constantly adjusting to those. I think that what sets Hush & Whisper aside from other distilleries here in Texas is that we really aim to have ownership of the full process. We'd like to be as transparent and educational as possible about where we're sourcing our grains, what we do with them afterward, the full distillation process, and everything that goes into it. The hard work, the time, the craftsmanship. And we want this to be a place where people come to discover, learn, enjoy, and experience the full distillation process. And come into this space and know that not only has this space been curated for you and for our community as the first of its kind, we want to curate the experience for each customer. We knew it was going to be hard. We knew it was going to take longer than normal because, you know, the first whiskey we put in our barrel, that's going to be, I don't know, four years until it's ready. But it didn't really occur to us to do it any other way. And then you throw in where we are, which is one of the tallest, oldest buildings in Aggie Land, and uh, things can get a little complicated. Caleb Clanton studied supply chain management and entrepreneurship at Mays Business School. So the idea for launching a craft distillery in downtown Aggieland was as much a commercial decision as it was a passion. I'm not a chemical engineer, so I, I couldn't look at it and say, hey, these tannins and these oils are interacting. But distilling is a long process in parts of it. A lot of it is making sure you have the right ingredient at the right time, and it's both simple and complex. But I think for supply chain, it was just what made sense. This whole process has been real education for me and everybody else that's been involved in it. And being able to learn about whiskey and teach other people about whiskey, it's a huge part of us, you know. But we knew that if we want to be the best, we have to know exactly where our ingredients are coming from. And not only that, we want to make sure that we have ownership of that throughout the entire process. Committed to becoming a grain-to-glass distillery, Caleb partnered with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension to source local grains that could be recycled into feed for local cattle. And then, when it came time to find a home for this new venture, he didn't have to look far. You know, we, we visited a couple of different places in College Station and then in Bryan and then kind of out in the country. But I think once we verbalized, what about the Verisco building? We all said, oh, of course, that's a, that's a great idea. The Verisco building started getting tossed around as an idea. And we faced a lot of challenges within the space because it is a historical building. It is the tallest building in downtown Bryan, rich with history. And in that process, we thought, why not honor the rich history of bourbon by placing the distillery in a building that has so much rich history itself? This building was built incredibly strong. That's one of the things uh, Brazos Farisco did is he, he over-engineered this building. But, you know, we had the cut a hole in the floor to put the still in because we didn't have 30-foot ceilings in here. And we had to cut the floor out of the fermentation room just so that we could support the 12,000 gallons of fermentation tanks that we have in there. And those were some of the challenges we faced just getting the distiller in here. The next hurdle was acquiring the equipment and personnel required to make bourbon, which is often associated with specialized craftsmanship and long, exorbitant wait lists. I think the first piece of equipment we bought was our Vindome still. Those are the best of the best. That's the absolute apex of stills. The still was delivered in 2018, but it was so important to us and their wait list was so long, we knew we had to have that as part of our ingredients. Besides that, you know, 50% of your flavor in any colored spirits comes from the barrel. And after a bunch of research and, and visits, we chose Kelvin Cooperage. Kelvin Cooperage has been in the industry for a long time. They're one of the best Cooperages out there, and we had some good luck in meeting them and, and speaking with them, and after, a, I think, maybe two site visits up to their Cooperage in Louisville, we were able to sign a contract and have them as our primary supplier for barrels. 
So we were committed to excellence and we, we got the best equipment we could, but we knew we also needed the last important ingredient, which was a head distiller. And we chose the best head distiller possible with, uh, with Aaron. It's amazing to see the body of knowledge that he has and he's bringing to Ocean Whisper. Yeah, I started with Seagram, spent some time with, uh, with Jim Beam. Before this position, I started up a distillery this similar size in Lexington, Kentucky. So very familiar with this kind of environment, this kind of process, all that kind of stuff. At full strength, we see the scope and scale of this distillery right around 10, 11 barrels a day, which is what we hope to achieve in the near future. While their whiskey ages, Hush and Whisper intends to entice spirit and cocktail lovers with education, immersion, and the quality of their customer experience. To be a bottled in bond bourbon, your bourbon has to sit about four years. So the first hire I made was Valerie, and she is our director of front of house. She's a level two SOM, and she's done a lot of work for us on developing our menu and our cocktails and our different flavors. We've been faced with the challenge of working with clear spirits to begin with while we wait for our whiskey and bourbons to age. And we really want to take ownership of that and not only create authentic craft spirits with intention and purpose, but to create an experience that from the tasting room itself to the craft cocktail bar to the immersive experience and the tour that we offer to guests keeps people wanting to come back and enjoy the space that we've created in our community. We knew from the beginning, if it was worth doing, it was worth doing right. And we're not the first distillers in Texas, and we're not, not even the first distillers to do grain to glass. But we're hoping that we can lead by example and, and show that this is a viable way to make spirits. So the goal with Hush and Whisper was always to aim big, to do everything the right way the first time, and to not hold back on any level of the curation and customization of the space with the main focus on the customer experience. We wanted to create a space that's unlike anything in our community and really bring a lot of energy and education and discovery to downtown Bryan. While we are early on in this process and testing out equipment and understanding the ins and outs of distilling in this space. We look forward to working with, learning from, and partnering with Texas A&M University in the future. When I was at Mays, I learned to dream big. And when we started planning this distillery, I knew that it was gonna have to be the best distillery in Texas. So that people outside of Texas would hear about Texas whiskey and know that there's quality whiskey coming out of Texas and it's made at Hush and Whisper Distilling.